Hi guys, happy Friday. We have Mark Fleming today. He's gonna share with us his career journey as a proud owner of a fitness studio. So let me just go find him. Oh, here we go, here's Mark. Hey, Mark. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Does it That's matter good. that it's Friday? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all, right? So do you have to work on weekends? Uh, yeah, I work on Saturdays. I try to leave uh, Sundays open just to relax and Whatever this weekend, I'm actually gonna go uh, have a spa day with my mom. So we're gonna Aww. get manies and patties together. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. so important. So I know that was probably one of the first, uh, one of the questions people want to ask you as a fitness trainer. Do you have to work in the evenings and weekends? I definitely work because... whenever I can get clients. Uh -huh. um, that's that's. Uh, where it is so right now I'm actually going to have a client that is going to start at 6 45 at night which wow. is uh, after my dinner time so mm -hmm. it's going to be weird for me because uh, mm -hmm. having patterns you know I, I eat uh, breakfast like at 8 I have lunch at 11 and I have mm -hmm. dinner at 6 and mm -hmm. so um when dealing with clients, you kind of just got to go off their schedule. So you kind of got to figure out how to um, muster through, you know, yeah. and, and just yeah. uh, know that uh, on that day now, I have to uh, wait until way late to eat, which is okay during that. I'll just mm -hmm. go get a snack or something beforehand mm -hmm. to hold me over. Right. So... I guess um, as far as uh, working um, as a fitness coach, you have to go with your client's schedule. So I imagine people would come like before they go to work and then at lunch time and then evening, like after five o'clock, right? That's what uh -huh. you're saying. You have to be flexible. Yeah, a lot of my clientele is very specialized, though. A lot of mm -hmm. them are homeschooled, so mm -hmm. they oh. they do still come in that middle of the day range, but mm -hmm. um, it just depends on the client and when they can come. I have a lot yeah. of college students as well that um, I have to mix mix things up. It's that time of year where I'm mm -hmm. busy kind of trying to uh, get people in new spots because, oh, we got to go to school at this time or we have a class at this yeah. time. So I got to be very, very flexible, which is, is one of my kind of hardest things to do is is being flexible. So um, obviously I do it during during my work day, but when mm -hmm. I get home, it's really hard to to stay in that mode. You know, yeah. I want to be rigid and, yeah. and, and, and kind of just cool off, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Mark, I, I didn't uh, introduce you yet uh, because it's just naturally to talk about scheduling to begin with, but let's go ahead and introduce you uh, and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Mark Fleming. I own and operate Equally Fit, which is a fitness-based studio in Tampa, Florida. I work uh, with individuals with disabilities, mainly uh, with individuals with autism. Uh, I got my bachelor's and master's from the University of Alabama, Roll Tide. Um, I got my first kind of witness of working with individuals with disabilities there. And um, just life kind of put me in a situation where I saw a need for individuals with disabilities to mm -hmm. uh, become more physically fit. And thus I kind of just went out on a, a wing and and mm -hmm. started a a dba that mm -hmm. eventually grew into mm -hmm. what is now equally fit yeah so mark did you after you finished school and you got your degree did you work 
with uh, uh, at a gym? Like, did you have to begin your career like working for somebody to just gain experience, uh, or did you just did you just go straight from like finishing up school and then working one on one uh, with your clients? So my in between year from from undergrad to grad, I did work at a gym. Um, mm -hmm. That was a, a great experience. I didn't uh, train or anything. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm fortunately not uh, what people look for when they're hiring uh, personal trainers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I kind of worked the front desk. I worked from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. It was a horrible wow. time uh, mm -hmm. of the day to work and work that uh, five days out of the week. Mm -hmm. um, but once I got out of grad school, I actually worked ABA uh, for a year and oh, wow. uh, volunteered with Special Olympics. And right. so that led me to understand that mm -hmm. the population I was about to serve yeah. uh, not only needed fitness uh, activity, but they mm -hmm. also needed someone that understood them. Yeah. And so uh, I kind of worked from my client's house at the beginning. I didn't go to a gym. I tried to, but unfortunately, since the clientele that I was looking at working with a lot of the gyms didn't want me to snipe their clientele mm. and so they wouldn't even uh allow me to to be a part-time trainer even though yeah. i only had like six hours of my own and mm -hmm. so that was a really rough time um at right. the beginning right so the beginning part is always difficult because like you're probably like for many of us, we just uh, finish up school and we need to uh, gain experience. And you went through a year of that working um, uh, at a place where you just have to go with their schedule and you have to do whatever they ask you to do. So I think that is not specific to in the world of fitness for like, for example, uh, I interview a tattoo artist and she also said that uh, the apprenticeship part where you have to like kind of shadow an expert in that field, you know, um, it's, it's hard, but it's also important because then you get to pick and choose. Well, if I own my own business in fitness or a tattoo studio, I would do it my way. Like, mm. so what did you learn during your apprenticeship, even though it was hard, what were some of the ideas that uh, you could uh, like take from that experience? Like, and you can apply now that you own your own business, there are certain things that you're gonna do it your way because it's your own business. So what did you take from that experience working uh, while working with someone else? Um, well, I learned a lot of things. I learned to, to keep my gym as clean as possible. Um, that is probably the most important thing mm. because of, especially nowadays. Um, yeah. And someone with sensory issues, that can be even harder to um, deal with. I am very uh, sensitive to vacuums. So I actually just mm -hmm. got myself a Roomba so that I, I can that. vacuum while I'm not at my gym, which is okay. amazing That's because awesome. I can actually get stuff done because yeah. there, there are times when a vacuum's on, I literally mm -hmm. have to go into my like safe zone and stim, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, right. I don't use um, stimming things. I, I'm usually just on Facebook or something, but mm -hmm. I'm stimming to, to kind of escape that mm -hmm. sound. And so mm -hmm. learning um, how to do things my way when it comes to cleaning and, and cause there's a lot of smells with cleaning as well. And, and, um, I did during that year of, of ABA, um, I did go and find out what everybody else was doing in the field that was right. towards fitness in this population. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of the things I didn't, um, like because it didn't make sense fitness wise. And then there were things that I I loved because of uh, the reinforcement and using an ABA background, I knew right away from a fitness standpoint, you're not going to give a kid an M&M &M for doing something fitness, you know, right. that count, right. counteracts what you're right. trying to do. Right. So um, I learned right away to just mm -hmm. use um, positive reinforcement, 
Unfortunately, I can't do high fives or fist bumps right now, right. Um, which is very unfortunate because all my kids are, mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the best things that, that happens during their workout is they get mm -hmm. that, that positive feedback, you know, that, that mm -hmm. uh, really helps. But I also learned a, a lot of good exercises that could be utilized. Um, with very little equipment, which is what I needed because mm -hmm. you can't go and buy $10,000 worth of equipment, you know, when you're first getting started. So right. I was lucky enough to find a few things to be able to use. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was, that was really great to, to be able to learn those little things. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't think about um, the sensory challenges related to uh like sweaty smell uh you know the smell from the chemicals you know that might throw you off uh, of course when you're working at someone else's gym you just have to deal push through right but when you have your own gym you can choose your own products you can uh do your own cleaning schedule and want to make sure your clients Autistic clients are also taken care of because they don't have to deal with smell and sticky stuff, which, you know, in a public gym, you have to deal with all It's really gross, right? So I didn't think mm. about that. That's really good, um, a good keep in mind. Um, but also, let's talk about um, the struggle, like building your own business at the beginning because... Uh, I think it's you're very very lucky that you're able to accom accomplish so much in such a short time. I think that's incredible. So can you tell us about what kind of support you got from your community and from your family? Um, so, so let's talk about that, like uh, community and family support, and then we can talk about other stuff that you have to figure out in order to build your business yeah so i was very fortunate my my parents have both both been in business for their entire lives my dad mm -hmm. was an executive at some really big mm -hmm. companies wow. and so um that really helped in forming business plans and, yeah. and stuff like that um and then community wise um we have a great organization here mm -hmm. um called uh, the center for autism and related disorders a right. card which is located at the University of South Florida and right. so what they did is that they made me a um, a story a, a social story mm -hmm. for my services for free nice um, so that I could put that on my website so when I advertise for um, mm -hmm. individuals with autism they could know exactly what's going to happen during a session and then mm -hmm. when I moved to my studio they just made me another one and they um, automatically certified me as one of their autism-friendly businesses nice. um, from the get-go because they right. understood I knew what I was doing. They didn't need to train me or anything, and that really helped as well get the word out. Um, so those were really good things from, mm -hmm. from those two mm -hmm. aspects. And obviously, like um, most parents, I did get a little financial help as well. Sure, sure, sure. So getting support from your community means that you're going to be openly saying, I'm an autistic fitness trainer. I have goosebumps saying that because I'm so proud of you. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are not able to say that because of the type of career they choose to do, which is really, really tough. So... I think your story is so inspiring to others, other autistic adults, to be able to just proudly say, I'm autistic, this is my business, and this is why I'm super good at it. You know, so uh, congratulations, because that's a really good beginning when you can just proudly say, you know, uh, uh, say, I am an uh, autistic and I own this business. So I think that's amazing. Uh, so I think what you were saying, uh, when we start a business, so get, be open about it, um, do your research and get, uh, community support as much as possible. Um, did, 
your dad ever sit down with you and help you develop a business plan? Because you can Google business, like simple business plans. You can even do uh, like just websites and then just be able to put down your thoughts. Did you go through that? Yeah, we, we did that quite a bit. Um, that was when I was opening up uh, trying to get a studio because the idea was to hopefully get some investors. Unfortunately, that didn't happen for me um, at that time. Maybe uh, in the future, it, it's a good skill to learn no matter if mm -hmm. you're, you're just using it for planning, for investors, whatever you're using it right. for. Um, and it doesn't have to be massive or anything like that. Um, and then I also had his friends, some of his friends looked at it for me mm -hmm. and gave me their opinions and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which was really, really helpful. Um, yeah. cause it kind of helps you realize where you want your, your business right. to go, the direction, because when you start a business, especially as a DBA uh, doing business as you have no idea if it's right. going to flourish or anything like yeah. that, you're just trying it out. And right. that's what it started off as is, I wonder if I can do this. And it turned into, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Let's see how I can make it thrive. You right. know, and we're still in that phase of getting to thriving, but mm -hmm. it's, it, I mean, it's going great. And so yeah. I, I really appreciate the time that I spent on that even though it took me like half a year right. to, to get it Figure to, it out. yeah. Cause it's, it's not easy stuff. You got to, it's oh. a lot of homework, a lot of homework. Cause you yeah. got to figure out your competitors. That's right. one of the big things is yeah. who are your competitors? And, and yeah. for me in, in, in my area, there really wasn't much. So I had right. to go farther out and do right. vast amount of research. And right. to be honest, I mean, it's, it's, it's really difficult, especially since a lot of organizations are still not uh, up mm -hmm. in the technological age. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it can be a little, little difficult with that. Yeah. So. so you were actually saying really important, take the time to really research, to figure out who you can go to, to ask for help in terms of uh, visualizing, uh, uh, you know, different parts of your business. Well, having a business plan is important if you're going to get a loan to from the bank, for example. They will ask you all these questions, so you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, and it sounds like you're also saying, like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Just keep asking for help. Because I think people uh, would be more than willing to sit down with you, but you do have to approach people. Don't be afraid to approach people, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid. And, and mm -hmm. remember, it's a learning process. No right. one's going to expect you to know everything. Right. You know? Um, yeah. I, I took business classes in college and right. I sat down and I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. And I took right. business classes, you know, and, right. and that's how, how strange it is, how, mm -hmm. how different it is from the real world to to, mm -hmm. to college and, and classes mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. um, there's it's plenty of, of, yeah, plenty of people out there, plenty of yeah. people. Um, so when you went to school, I, I say that we get the books, book smart stuff, right? All these knowledge that we learn in class. And then when you're out there in the real world, you have to gain the street smart abilities if you want to call it and then that's the first six months you uh, prepare to learn to build the pieces that's and then with the help of your dad you know uh it's that's really really important so that that's a really i think um good tip important tip for people trying you know what what can i do uh on my own you know to take the time to be play detective and ask for help uh, so my next question would be if you feel comfortable I, you said that you got some financial support from your parents uh, other ways to get financial support is also like uh, like getting a loan from the bank or maybe some people do like go fund me uh, uh, like do you know of any other ways that we people can seek 
some financial support when they're trying to launch their business? Um, it depends on your business, first off. Um, there are a lot of grants out there, actually, for okay. individuals with disabilities and minorities in general that um, if you have that business plan, uh, they will um, help you obtain that, that um, kind of seed money. Um, I didn't go this route, but um, the, uh, oh, I forget the name of it. But there's a, a career thing for individuals with disabilities mm -hmm. that if they help you create your mm -hmm. business plan, they That's will amazing. then um, give you some money. Unfortunately, I didn't want that help um, uh -huh. from them, but I mainly just did GoFundMe, and right. and uh, I was fortunate enough to have some funds myself and and um, just to keep it afloat, you know. Um, until I needed to, right. and thankfully, with with the virus, I got um, the loan from the government, so I could stay afloat wow. during, yeah, yeah. during yeah. the virus. You know, yeah. there's there's yeah. uh, there's a lot of risk you have to take though with with all those loans. You got to be very prepared to understand right. what yeah. you're you're taking because I I actually I had to take a a, a credit card for thirty percent. Wow that after 18 months, I would have had been paying 30% yeah. yeah. on it. And, and if I, I didn't know I was going to pay it off, like, yeah, that is not a something you want to take if, yeah, if you're, you're starting your business off, because 30% is massive. Yeah, yeah. Um, huge. And so yeah. you got to understand those things. And, and yeah. that's where where your community comes in, and they can help you yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, and so it's, there's, yeah. there's a lot of resources out there. Right, right. So when it comes to, I guess, managing your funds, your financial investments, uh, if that was me, I would really struggle because I have a number dys dyslexia. So I tend not to understand what is an interest rate at 3% or this and that. You know, I just have, I can't imagine that and calculate it and I may fail <laughs> uh, badly you know so I think a lot of autistic adults they do have these learning challenges if you want to call it that and just be aware of that when it comes to you know obtaining the funds and then we're getting a loan we have to sit down with somebody and double check triple check just to make sure we can um, you know fulfill uh, the commitment, uh, you know, uh, however it was agreed upon with the lender, you know, I think that's a really important keep in mind for people. Um, so let's talk about uh, your first year of owning your business. Let's talk about the pluses. What, what do you love about just having your own space? Like, what are the, pl there are a lot of pluses, of course. Um, first thing I get to take naps in the middle of the day. Oh, if I, I love need that. To. Um, that's the, <laughs> the reason why I have a couch in, in my studio. I it's, love it. But, but, um, no, um, it, it's a stable place that I'm yeah. going to every day. So mm -hmm. I'm not, um, driving, what was it up to maybe a hundred miles in a day wow. sometimes, mm -hmm. um, to where now I'm just. 20 minute drive, I'm there. I know what I'm doing first thing when I get there. I know what I need to do before the first session. Right. You know, it, it's that structure is, right. is the biggest benefit is to understand that structure. And mm -hmm. um, just providing a safe place because some individuals yeah. um, that I was working with, we were working outside. And in Florida, it's not really safe to work out all the time outside because you got rain, hot. lightning, yeah. hot, right. um, all those things. And you're dealing with, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. individuals that may not understand mm. what their body's telling them about the heat and that mm -hmm. they may be thirsty and all these yeah. things. So I, that, that uh, first kind of go around with um, right. doing in home and, and at parks. I had to work against heat aversion and stuff like that to mm -hmm. to get these individuals to kind of accept working outside, mm -hmm. which 
was mm-hmm. great that we got him to that, but it yeah. was definitely a downfall. So yeah. um, knowing when the loud noises are coming and all that stuff is very beneficial. It's more predictable. Yes. It's, it's a controlled environment. So that's the process. And I also think that uh, you can uh, create a schedule you know when to schedule your clients and you know when to schedule breaks for yourself because that's really important for us to, you can't just do boom, 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 like people coming, you mm-hmm. know, you, you know, you, you can set boundaries, I suppose, uh, scheduling wise, right? Definitely. I definitely have to now with, with COVID mm-hmm. stuff because I want to mm-hmm. make sure that all the particles are, are down on the floor before another client gets mm-hmm. in. But mm-hmm. there was a time where I used to do them all and, and I was right. quite good at it. Um, it. It just, I needed like three or four minutes just to be able to put things out, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, because I, I'm very hyper-focused when, when I'm training, you know, right. I'm just training. I'm not right. worried about, right. oh, how I'm feeling or anything. Now, right. when I get home, I'll, pass out if, if I need to. Sure. But, um, sure. Yeah. At work, it's, it's work, you know? Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about people skills. Like, this is like something I hear a lot from other uh, autistic adults when I interview them. Like uh, many of them, like the the benefit of having your own business, of course, is you can like maybe choose certain types of like clients, uh, like uh, what kind of customer I suppose is really like challenging for you and like, do you ever, well, I know you said that you're not turning down clients, but is there such a thing as a difficult potential client you know when we meet somebody like we just don't have a good vibe and it's like i don't know if you have that kind of sense yeah. and um not really when it comes to to the business even though mm-hmm. like there are some people that i'm like i don't know about this but yeah i'll still um still train them um mm-hmm. but there there are definitely some parents that have have um unfortunately have have made things a lot more difficult than they should have been right. um, just because of my roles and boundaries I've set yeah. for myself. They don't right. appreciate them enough. And so right. I've kind of had to walk away from a couple of clients because right. not because of the kids, but because right. of their parents. Yes. Um, and I've had, I've had people bite, hit me. Like I don't really? care about any of that stuff. Just right. pay me on time and, yeah. And understand I know what I'm doing, you know, right. like those are the, the two main things that 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 really bother me when it when it comes to to clientele is understand that I know what I'm doing and that yeah. I'm not um, putting your child at any risk mm-hmm. for any development of bad behavior or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. second, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a professional, you know, right. I deserve I deserve pay. And I know that a lot of individuals with autism would do their jobs for completely free if they could. And, and I would too, but I got to live. We got to live. We got to eat. We got things we like to do. And, and, and the only way you gain respect is if you charge what you're worth. That's the only way you'll gain respect. And that's what a lot of people don't get. And yeah. they don't know why they yeah. keep getting stepped on and, and all this stuff. It, it's, it's because they, they need to just mm-hmm. stand up for yourself. Yeah. Just stand up. Yeah. And I know, and I think that's, I think that's a uh, part of the freedom as a business owner, if you want to call it that, because you, you can set your own rules, you know, like cancellation policy, you know, because, uh, our business is kind of similar because I'm a coach and I, I do uh, set up appointments and, you know, that cancellation policy is the one thing. You you can't just uh, keep allowing people to come to the sessions late, for example, because then that ruins the your whole day and it's not fair for your other clients. So that's an example of, you know, as our 
as our own business owner, you do have to set boundaries. You do have to say no. And that's how our clients actually respect us more because we are professionals. You know, professionals have to learn to like, this, these are my hours. If you have any questions, mm -hmm. send me an email. <laughs> you, know, you know, there are things like that, I think, for new, um, you know, business owner, autistic business owners, they tend to like do what the clients want too much but it's at the expense of you know uh their own like what's the word uh mental health i suppose because mm -hmm. it's just a lot of times we just get so stressed out and we don't know what triggers it you know so well, and we all grow up thinking the client is right is always right right we hear that from a, a wee little thing yeah. And and so, well, if someone comes to you and they're like, well, I want that for free. Right. And you're like, well, I haven't sold anything today. So yeah. uh, here you go. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't work that way. In the yeah. Real world. Um, well, actually, a lot of autistic young adults, they grew up depending on other people telling them what to do. So our gauge is actually like feedback from other people. So we, we're not always intuitive and we don't know that we're allowed and we should be empowered to set boundaries. That's a good thing. So yeah. I think this is a very important message that you're uh, sharing uh, with the audience. It's so important to empower yourself to think about what's important for me and how I set boundaries when it comes to my clients because it's part of it. I think otherwise we don't, we can't do a good job because you know we're distracted, we're exhausted, and so on. You know, so let's talk about as a business owner. I think the downside also is juggling so many roles. Do you feel like that? Like you just have to do everything. <laughs> You're a one man show now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it, it's quite hard. This this last week, I couldn't be as. Um vocal on on social media with with the page because right. i was juggling around interviews and um uh, uh, clients needing things moved and and a bunch of different other stuff that that had to be done and next week's not going to be any any better because guess what it's the first of the month yeah. all the bills are due and so i gotta yeah. do all that i gotta yeah. pay the rent i gotta pay me i gotta pay Aww. um all the bills to to make sure yeah. that things are right and that comes at the beginning right. of the month mm -hmm. and that's one of those things that it doesn't matter what else i have going on that day that has right. to get done and yeah. so um there's just some things that as a one-man show you gotta prioritize you gotta to understand hey i can't be as as active on social media as I really want right. to, right. but I'm still being like building the brand because right. I schedule more interviews. I've done this. I've done that. I yeah. brought, I, I had five consultations last month. I'm right. still kind of de de-stressing mm -hmm. over that. Cause I've never had five consultations in a month, which yeah. is great. Yeah. But it's also very exhausting to try to figure mm -hmm. out where these people are going to fit in to my schedule because right. I don't have a blank slate. Right. And, and and just figuring that all out can be very yeah. stressful if if um, you got a lot going on, which which is great, but it's still uh, it's still exhausting. You know, yeah, you sure. use a lot of that mental mental power to do everything, mm -hmm. and so um, yeah, but. In the end, it's worth it, you know? It will be worth it because you're, like, all of your social media work, you know, it's going to pay off because your business is going to grow and you're doing something that you love and you're good at it. You're helping a lot of people. It's so many good things that mm -hmm. I see you do, you know. And there, there are not many competitions of, like, an, an autistic-owned fitness studio, you know, none so to my knowledge. Maybe you can open a branch here. <laughs> that, that's the idea. Is is, is is yeah. Is I'm hoping later this year to hire Absolutely. someone and 
and then maybe in next year or the year after yeah. to try to branch out a little bit. Um, I want to yeah. keep kind of the the small area that yeah. I have um, yeah. and yeah. kind of keep it kind of like that to to yeah. to focus more on on uh, skill attainment and understanding our bodies with fitness and yeah. all that stuff instead of going, oh, let's do CrossFit. Let's do all this other stuff yeah. now. Let's keep it simple. That's another yeah. thing. Always keep it simple. Yeah. It's, it's the KISS principle. Have you heard that? Keep it no, simple. No, but I, I, I say that all the time. Keep it simple and what it means. So as a new business owner, I think that's a really good motto. Keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually keep it simple, stupid <laughs> is the <laughs> is, is saying because it's KISS. Um, I think I learned that in grad school. Um, yeah. But I mean, when, you, when you're thinking about what you have to do, just keep it simple. It doesn't have to be so elaborate. People aren't looking for uh, the craziest things. They're just looking for a reliable thing, you know? Yeah. And so that's a great principle. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, I'm trying to think, does any, anybody here have any questions for Mark? Are you thinking about starting your own business and share with us like what kind of business you're thinking about? Uh, if you're an autistic young adult, neurodivergent young adult, uh, is that what are your dreams? You know, it, everything starts with a dream, right, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> yes. that's what I'm saying <laughs> you know go after your dreams <laughs> but also listen to the the universe or, or God or whoever may yeah. be calling you into your passion because yeah. I I literally um, during college like four times I was like no I'm gonna go train athletes you know until yeah. something big happened landing yeah. me back in Tampa yeah. and that's where I was like, fine, I'll, I'll try it, you know, right. um, because um, society tells us you have to make a lot of money. You have to do, yeah. uh, you got to do all these crazy things. You know, I wanted to work at, I wanted to train like LeBron and all those <laughs> athletes because yeah. that was the popular thing to do. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I am making real change with right. real life people yeah. that need not only fitness training, but they need someone to look up to. Because right. I didn't have anybody to look up to growing up mm. as an uh, individual with autism yeah. because I was highly into sports. Well, right. back then there was absolutely no one, you know, mm -hmm. there there wasn't anybody out there. Mm -hmm. And right. so this is, is a dual thing, you know, is that mm -hmm. I am showing uh, young young kids that have autism that, hey, if you want to do something, go do it. You don't have to be pigeonholed into yeah. technology or yeah. the arts or whatever. You yeah. can go do what you want to do. Yeah. And that, I think, is one of the, the truly special yeah. things about what I'm doing. Yeah, I think autistic people, we're very passionate people. So if we can turn uh, our passion into possibilities like what you did, I think, and make a difference and change lives, I, that's a really something special. Not very many people can say that. So I feel like you're very blessed. Yes, you know. I am. Yeah. So um, uh, whenever you're ready, when you're at the point where you're like, you can hire or outsource to people ready to expand on or ready to maybe offer a role for another neurodivergent person within your company, definitely, you know, tag me or, or we can just get it out there. So it's, for sure. I just love that idea of a neurodivergent hiring other neurodivergent. So we yeah. have uh, a question from Johnny, my friend. Uh, what is your anchor values when business gets tough? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm not too sure what you mean by anchor values. It's, the only thing I can think of is is um, what I kind of fall back to if business yeah. gets what tough. What I think what he's saying is that what motivates you to keep going when the going gets tough? 
you know, like COVID-19? Um, knowing that I'm making a change, you yeah. know, that, that this isn't a money making thing. This is mm -hmm. real life change that's going that's right. on. It's, right. um, it's my passion. If yeah. I, I, I did this where I went through not only undergrad, but grad school, not telling a soul about my diagnosis yeah. because I wanted to, I wanted to feel normal, whatever yeah. um, you want. But mm -hmm. I did this mm -hmm. and I came out. I said, I'm yeah. doing this as an autistic individual. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I wasn't able to get jobs, part-time mm -hmm. jobs mm -hmm. was because I was an autistic individual. Yeah. Um, I, it took me a year to get, a studio because mm -hmm. I was out as an autistic individual. And mm -hmm. so that's one of the main drives is that I am creating paths for right. other individuals that mm -hmm. want to do something because yes, if I didn't have some of the resources I had mm -hmm. to fall back on, I wouldn't yeah. have gotten a studio. I wouldn't have gotten flooring. Right. Um, right. I wouldn't have gotten a lot of these things because I went to those people. I was like, hey, this is a really cool building. Can I make an offer? I'm autistic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they ghosted me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that, that shouldn't happen. So right. the, 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 you have to be a very persistent and, and perseverance person to, to, to kind of go through those tough storms and know that, at the end yeah. of the day, when you're making change, yeah. things are going to go right. And that's what you hang on to, knowing that you have a lot to give and you're making a difference, you know. And uh, so to wrap up, I think the keep in mind that I'm hearing is that uh, when you're thinking about building your own business, knowing that... Uh, you have to be prepared, take the time to be prepared, do your homework, ask for help. You have to be persistent, not give up so easily. You have to ask for help, whether it's family or community. Um, is, let's see, is there anything else that you want to share with uh, our, you know, our friends listening to the recording later. Um, whatever your passion may be, it, your, your job could just be a parallel path. So mm -hmm. like I was very interested in being sports, yeah. being an athlete and stuff like that and didn't know that I could actually train people, which yeah. is a different path but still deals with athletes and sports and right. exercise, all that mm -hmm. stuff that I didn't know about until mm -hmm. my junior year of yeah. undergrad. So yeah. if you're really into something that maybe, I don't know what it is, but yeah. there's side paths to, mm -hmm. to get you to, to make money, but yet also yeah. enjoy what exactly. you're doing. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that's a big, Big That's point. a big one to also for parents to nurture the interests, to explore. That's really important and find the passion uh, in your children uh, because that could, those could be pathways in the future. Uh, so that's really important. So uh, text me your number. When I upload this recording, I want to be able to post your number. And then you said that you're also doing distant consulting that it's possible for people to engage with you. So that's yeah. really cool. I'm excited too for you to get yeah, clients I, from the other part of the world out of Florida. That yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing um, online sessions, virtual sessions. Awesome. So, yeah. um, and, and what's great about that is you don't need any equipment. I know what yes. you can use. I know all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So you don't, Absolutely. Um, especially since a lot of people are, are afraid to go to gyms, especially yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, I can I can easily make plans for you and stuff like that. So don't hesitate because yeah. being healthy, physically healthy is very important when you're looking to 
to get a job and all that stuff. Right. So definitely don't don't um, don't miss out. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mark. This is like such an amazing sharing today. Really appreciate you. Appreciate your aspirations. And I think people will learn a lot from this. So we have to do this again. Um, awesome. See, you're amazing, Mark. Yeah, so I can't wait. So I'm going to upload this recording on YouTube, give you the YouTube clip, and then we'll get it out there. Awesome. Sounds All good. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye. You too. Bye, guys. Thanks Bye. for joining us.